Tsun tucked away in the rural heartland of China. 50 families live here, most like the village, are surnamed Xiao. Old Mr. Xiao's health is declining after a long illness last year. He finds it harder and harder to look after his fields. Mr. Xiao often wonders who'll take over his fields when he can't go on any longer. His son has gone away, joining a massive flow of young people to the cities. Already 100 million peasants have left the land, seeking a new life in the cities. An industrial revolution is transforming Chinese society. This movement is on such a scale that it now threatens the stability of the country. Every other day, old Mr. Xiao's son, Xiao Liang Yu, takes his makeshift cart on a regular route through the outskirts of Beijing. Two years ago, he worked on his father's rice fields in Anhui. Now, he collects rubbish for recycling. At the collection point, he sells his load to the recyclers, making a profit of 50%. Each gram of rubbish, the waste from a consumer society he can still barely afford to live in, brings him closer to his dream of becoming a chauffeur to the new rich and seeing his son through university. The city is unwelcoming and far from home, but here he earns in a month what he used to make in a year. And for now, life is good. <laughs> The Shaos live in a ghetto occupied by people from their province. Around Beijing, there are 25 such ghettos, each housing outsiders from a different part of the country. They are known as China's floating population. Three million of them make their home in Beijing, one quarter of the city's population. The ghettos are a focus for local resentment and fear. Born and bred Beijing workers blame the outsiders for stealing their jobs and for the city's rising crime rate. To combat the problem, the local government declared war on the ghettos, even ordering the demolition of some quarters, like this one in the city's southwest. 
tension over the ghettos has reached such heights, there are now virtually no-go zones for foreign journalists. Even this innocent interview with a recent arrival from Zhejiang rapidly turns nasty. We were told we had no right to film here. This man attempting to drag the ABC's interpreter to the police. Wang Shan is an old-style Maoist. He has the ear of those in the Chinese leadership wanting to turn back the clock on reform. He says the peasants are a powder keg and warns that they've brought down Chinese governments before. 和工人阶级开始分离，把工人这阶层呢推向市场。这个时候的话，如果允许农民进城和工人做争夺的话，那么工人实际上是受到了双重打击。一个方面呢，就是他不再享受特殊的权利、特殊的利益；另外一方面
But having seen what's to gain from city life, she too is desperate to leave. But her dream of a new life in the cities may be thwarted by a government keen to re-establish control. Above the doorway, a Chinese character proclaims the arrival of happiness. But the Sun household has little cause to be happy. No one has gone out to make a fortune. Untouched by the wealth of returnees, they can't make ends meet by relying on farming. So straw is woven into baskets to supplement the farm income. The son's daughter has been retarded since birth. Now she's 30, spends each day of her life sitting in the same place, twisting hay into string, earning the family a few cents of extra income. At one end of the village, firecrackers celebrate a new match. The nervous bridegroom is a farmer. His sullen bride has already been out to work in the city. They won't stay in Xiaotun for long. <laughs> and when these children grow up, they too are bound to leave. <laughs> At the other end of the village, the Shaos also celebrate. A brief homecoming and a son's success in breaking new ground. Young Shao's success will encourage still more from his village to leave the land. He's part of a tide flowing out of the countryside, a tide that now seems unstoppable. The floodgates have been opened by the leadership. Now it must control the tide or face the consequences.